I am going to walk away from this mic. If I do it so that you can't hear me, everybody should make like a loud noise that indicates that I've suddenly become silent. That would be very helpful. Um, welcome to the State of Fedora talk for 2019. Welcome to Flock. Thank you all for coming here. Um, here's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, we had a council meeting in like December, November last year and had some strategic work we did there, which I want to talk about here. How many people read the blog post that we made after that? Okay, so that's like a quarter of the room, which is, which is pretty good. Um, hopefully this will be a refresher for you, and hopefully it will not be shocking to everybody else, but um, that's what I'm talking about. Then I'm gonna do my traditional charts, talk a little bit about some things that are going on in Fedora that I find interesting. That's gonna be kind of hurried and will not be comprehensive. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about, you know, the future. Right. Um, how many people are jet lagged still? Woo! Okay, awesome. That is good because I'm going to start right in with classwork here. Um, how many people have seen something like this before? All right, awesome. You've been listening to me, maybe. This is a program logic model, um, which is a thing that comes from the nonprofit world. It's a way of both planning and also evaluating whether the thing you're doing has actual impact on the world. And the way it works, you start with your planning over at the right side uh, <laughs> with the, sort of the mission and vision and what you want to accomplish in the world. So if, we're, for example, we're trying to end homelessness in a city, um, you know, our mission might be and homelessness in the city, and the vision might be something about you know how everybody is cared for and things like that. Um, then everything gets more concrete going to the left. So the outcomes are things that are measurable change. So that might be like half of the homeless population uh, is in housing, um, something you know, or you might want to pick some number that's achievable. These should be things that are something in a, like a three to five year time frame usually. Something that. Is, an, is a number that you can move. So maybe also like 20% more affordable housing stock or something like that. Then there's a little squiggly line because those two things are things that you want to happen, um, but they're not things you can actually do yourself. So everything on the left is more concrete. Um, and those are things, uh, so outputs are actually things that you actually do. So an output might be like, if you go the Habitat for Humanity approach, output might be built houses, like a number of houses that you've built. Or it might be um, community grants from local developers, banks, or it might be you know, zoning laws changed, so things that actual results. Then it gets more obvious going to the left, like the activities are the things you have to do that, like build houses or uh, you know, do community organizing, those kind of things. Um, and then resources are what you have to, to make that happen. Um, so uh, this, if you've seen OKRs, the objectives and key results thing, that's actually kind of a small logic model kind of thing that doesn't quite as fleshed out as this one. I like the big model for programs. OKRs is kind of a nice thing for personal achievements. Um, but it's, basically, it's really kind of the same idea. Uh, so I have, since I started in this job, wanted to build one of these for Fedora because it's kind of a thing where we want to see what is the impact of Fedora and we want to be able to organize our resources. And that's actually one of the reasons we started on making a new Fedora mission, because when we started to look at, at, at the mission that was um, set in like 2012 or so, it was so big and grand. It was, it's, it, it's a great thing about leading you know, open source in the world, uh, but it was kind of hard to go from what would we do to do that and also um, make an operating system was not one of the things that occurred to me when I was thinking of what are the things we should do to make that mission come true. So clearly, making an operating system is fundamental to what Fedora does. So we kind of, uh, we changed that mission a little bit to this, which is in such fine print, I can't actually read it there. Uh, but basically, we make an operating system and we also make it easy for the community to build solutions uh, for users on that operating system. Like that's, that's the mission that we've got here. Um, however, we are kind of missing a vision statement. When we worked on that mission before, uh, we were kind of focused on solving this problem of the mission is too, too broad and we need to have something that we can act on that we're still also you know, enthused about and proud of. So we kind of set aside the vision, vision setting, which um, 
I kind of think that we, we need to fill that in and have something that kind of talks about the world we want to make with Fedora. So uh, this is actually a pitch. It's in disguise. Um, we have uh, elected positions on the Fedora Council. And that this, working on this stuff is one of the main jobs of the Fedora Council. Um, if this interests you even a little bit, if you kind of have an idea for how you know, want Fedora to change the world, run for the Fedora Council in the next election and um, come help us do this. Uh, we also have kind of some vagueness in the outcome. So this is kind of one of, one of the problems here is it's hard to measure Fedora um, well, out for privacy reasons and because we're doing a lot of different messy things. So this is something else we could do some more work on. Obviously, I'll show you my charts and graphs later, which is some part of it. But there's a lot of other things that we could measure um, that we could probably do better. Um, but we do have these things that are the Fedora objectives that are kind of specific things, each which has its own outcome that is a measurable thing. Um, so those, those things kind of fit into what we have as the Fedora outcomes. Um, then the outputs are, you know, the, the things we, meet, we make. And I think these are, these are pretty good. And in a lot of ways, um, we're actually, actually doing this in the middle, from the middle out. Um, when, when you do this process, you're really supposed to start with the impact you know, on, and a green field and work back to what you want to do. Obviously, we kind of have outputs and then we go both directions from there, well, which is just the reality of working with a project that's whatever, 15, 16, 17 years old. Um, so uh, yeah, and then activities, you know, the, the stuff we actually do and uh, resources, uh, our time, our, you know, the money we get from various sources, the hardware we have, those kind of things. Uh, so in theory, you know, once you have this all done, everything that's a resource uh, you know, flows nicely into the things we do and all the way to the right, and you can kind of go both ways back and forth in a nice, satisfying, neat way that both uh, shows that what you're doing has impact on the mission and also um, that you know, uh, the mission has all the things it needs to actually be accomplished. And so this is a really useful tool. Like when I go to, for example, Denise here and say, hey, we need help with this. And I can say, we need this thing here because look at this line through to the thing we're trying to accomplish in Fedora. And then it's a, a much easier argument to make than just a, I wish I had this um, argument, which I, which I also do make sometimes. Uh. All right, uh, so to the Fedora Council Hackfest. We kind of went in with that. So we had this mission. We want to make it easy for people to you know, build Fedora so solutions on Fedora. And the basic problem we went in with is it's too hard. Things are kind of uh, chaotic in Fedora. How do, we, how do we actually make that mission be a true statement? Um, what, what can we do to adjust the way Fedora is structured to work on that? And so we have, came up with basically two major themes. There's a nice blog post, which is now actually in the docs.fedoraproject.org page that kind of goes through this. I encourage you to read, but I'm also going to summarize here. Um, so yeah, uh, the first thing is these objectives. And so I've talked about the objectives before. Uh, objective leads are people who are you know, tasked with driving this to completion. And that's actually a, uh, a part-time council position as well. Um, we have a new thing where these objectives get status updates in this dashboard. And actually, um, any team in Fedora can uh, talk to Ben Cotton and get your weekly status added there. This is kind of a business style, uh, red, green, yellow, kind of what, what's the state of, the, of this sub-project. And one of the reasons to do this is a lot of times we've had, we've had trouble getting good status reads from the objectives, even when there's work going on. And it's kind of hard to, to do that communication um, in, in sync with the Fedora meetings if maybe you're not a full-time Red Hatter. And we really wanted this to be open to anybody who wants to have this kind of big impact on improving the project. Um, so we wanted to make it so we can have kind of a more async approach to giving the status outputs. And again, Ben, our program manager, is uh, taking care of that. Uh, so yeah, here's some examples of some of the objectives that are kind of tied directly to this idea of making it easier to build solutions in Fedora. Um, the minimization effort, which is basically we could if we start with a smaller uh, Fedora core, then it's easier to build things on, on top of that. Um, of course, as I always say, it's not doesn't mean we're going back to a Fedora core that is a Red Hat thing. The Fedora core 
um, in this sense, it belongs to all of us, and that's why we're not calling it Fedora Core, because we don't have that argument, right? Um, but I, I think that's, that's a pretty exciting thing. The gating stuff, there's a huge amount of talks at this conference about gating and automation um, and uh, CI um, that I think will be really interesting. Uh, modularity, it's still a work in progress, of course, but it's still, again, it is for this goal of making it easier to, to build things that move at different speeds, too fast, too slow, kind of the fundamental problem of operating systems. Uh, we are very slowly but steadily going to solve that. Uh, again, making it easier to package things in Fedora. Packaging is a fundamental activity of the project. And then also, um, again, going back to the, the long form of the mission where it says we have you know, platforms for uh, hardware, clouds, and containers, uh, IoT is an area where we didn't really have a very good offering, so launching it in addition uh, is made an objective because we want to make sure we're covering that segment that we hadn't really before, so making an addition is part of the thing. Um, so the other thing we worked on was this idea of teams, building blocks, services, and solutions. And we actually went into this with a longer document with a whole lot of jargon and terminology, taking some of the existing jargon with uh, SIGs and working groups and spins and labs and all of these things. And we'd actually come up with a pretty complicated process. And then uh, about halfway through the day, we threw that all away. And so we, we narrowed down the jargon to, to a smaller things. Um, basically, uh, in any group in Fedora, whether it's a SIG or a more formal structured working group or anything, are basically just a team. And uh, you can call your team whatever seems appropriate for that for the team, we decided not to have like codified hierarchy of different sub-projects in Fedora. Um, but a team is anybody that provides a building block, an output that can be used to do other things, or services to something else. Um, so, for example, these are some teams in Fedora. Um, I think they're all existing, well-established teams. Uh, they ma they make something or they do something for somebody else. Uh, and then you know the services that they provide. Um, and I, th yeah, I think that's all pretty obvious. Um, so, uh, the end goal of that is once you have all of these teams that are doing, providing services and making building blocks, um, those building blocks can actually be put together to make a solution. Um, this is not a marketing term. We don't want to have like a Fedora solutions page somewhere. I think that will. Um, probably upset our corporate benefactors, among other things. But it's kind of what the, what the idea uh, of what, what we're actually doing. This is something for end users that addresses a problem they have. And that's kind of, we want uh, the things that Fedora does to actually be useful to people. It's not just an abstract thing where we're building an operating system for ourselves. We want to make sure we're building it for other people because otherwise what's the point of it? Uh, so, you know, the, the things that are our traditional additions and labs and spins, those are basically the solutions. Um, and one of the things we, want, we, we highlighted in this is that uh, if you're a team in Fedora, this is, again, this is one, one of the Debian social contract things I think is important, is you can't make somebody else do work uh, because a lot of us are volunteers and even you know, people working uh, for Red Hat are either following a team agenda they have at Red Hat or else they're volunteering on this thing. And just because you want to have something done doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to line up everybody else to do it. So the teams can set what they are going to do and why. And they, uh, we would really like uh, teams to kind of advertise, this is what we do, and this is how, uh, this is how you get services from our team, and you know, what kind of levels they will, they will do it for. So we might, for example, uh, you know, if, you, if you're a web development team, you might say, you know, if this is one of Fedora's big offerings, we'll prioritize making a nice fancy splash page for you. Um, if somebody comes and uh, Bex is not here, but I'll use his favorite example. Uh, if you want to make a uh, Fedora for llama herders, llama farmers, that might not be one of our bigger tar target audiences. It's still important, but you know, to the people who use it, but it's not necessarily a gigantic mass market thing. So the web design team say, might say, okay, we can provide you, you know, a scaffolding, and you, we don't know anything about llama farming, so you can fill out what that's going to look like, but here's the process, that kind of thing. Um, again, solution, not, not a marketing term. It's just kind of the, the practical impact of it. Um, so if you looked at the mission statement here, um, one, one of the things that's a little bit 
uh, complicated about it and kind of unique um, is that the mission statement kind of looks like it's eating its own tail because we have at this side, uh, you know, Fedora creates this innovative platform for uh, hardware and clouds and containers. And then that enables uh, software developers and community members to build solutions. So there's kind of a, this is, which side are we? It might be, it, it seems like it might be easier if we say, oh, we build solutions for users, that's our mission. Or it might be, we create this platform, who cares about the users? Uh, but we kind of wanted to put that all together. An example of that kind of might be uh, some other, other distribution uh, might say, you know, this is our main focus, we make this one thing, and if you have a solution for some other problem, you're, you can be a downstream of us, but you're not really part of the project. Uh, in Fedora, we want to have a different approach where we all work together no matter, you know, even if you are addressing the llama herding problem, like we would like you to come do that as part of Fedora in Fedora because when we work all together like that, it, the uh, shared work uh, can be useful to other people and it just kind of builds a nice bigger uh, everybody is friends thing that I, that I like. Um, so to rephrase that, that same mission statement, basically, and, and putting the Teams concept in it, Teams create this platform um, when they enable other teams also in Fedora to make, make the solution. So that's kind of, that's the structure we, we came to and kind of makes, I hope, hope makes that uh, eating its own tail mission statement kind of make more sense about how we want Fedora to work. Um, Uh, so yeah, an example of that, you know, for example, it might be the, the Python classroom lab, which is meant you know, for teaching Python in a classroom. Um, that team I mean, makes that solution for, for that particular use case, but also does a lot of work on Python in general that benefits the whole project. So that's uh, an example of a team that kind of exists mainly f you know, for that, that end, end solution, but also has the whole benefit all together when we do it that way. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, back to the, the overall policy, putting it all together. Uh, Fedora as a whole uh, focuses on enabling teams to build solutions. So when someone uh, in marketing, Red Hat, asked me, what's Fedora's user base? I say, well, it's complicated. Uh, but Fedora, as Fedora's user base is really Fedora, other Fedora teams. Like, the, what, what is Fedora as a general project? Like, it's for the teams to build solutions. But then the Fedora teams each have their own audience and mission and those kind of things. Uh, so it's a multi-level thing. Fedora is, is big and we're basically a portfolio project. So we try to address a lot of these different use cases. Uh, but uh, anyway. uh, we also still have some of these big category platform solutions. We have Fedora Workstation, we have Fedora Server. Um, and these kind of things that hit these areas that we've identified as big strategic things. These are the things that kind of enable that platform um, through being an end, an end user solution, like the work that the desktop team does on all of the things uh, for you know, their GNOME-based Fedora workstation benefits all of the desktop Linuxes in huge amount of ways. So it's both an enabler and, and a, a basic platform to build on. Um, but right now, um, as a project, again, with, with the objectives we're focusing on, we really need to focus on the things that make the story about we build this operating system and we make this available to people. We need to focus on the things that make that true. So uh, this is one of the things, um, you know, we focus a lot on the gating and CI kind of things. We haven't focused so much on end user things a lot. That's why the objectives, um, you know, we, we kind of had, we had a university outreach objective and it didn't really go anywhere and part of it is we're not ready for that right now. We've got to get some of these things, like our developer outreach, our developer story. We need to get our we can we are we are the best at making this platform story together before we get there. Um, so if if some of these things go well, I hope that you know next flock we'll be talking about a little bit more about some of the user outreach and those kind of things that we can do. Um, and I want to end this with um, this part with uh, some of the kind of basic guidelines we came up with teams. One of the things uh, we kind of had, this is something we talked about in the council, um, when do you need to ask permission to do things? Generally don't. Like if it's something that's in your area, and especially if it's something that like, you know, could be put back if you accidentally made a mistake, like just do the thing in your area. 
It's, it's not something you need to stop and ask permission for. This is something I often get where people are like, I would do that, but I don't want to post a devel list because people are going to complain and then I will not get anywhere with it. Um, you should post a devel list because there are a lot of people here with a lot of wisdom who can give feedback and input. Um, and, but people who have feedback and input who, which are not involved in the thing are also not able to block you. Just because somebody complains about something doesn't mean that uh, you shouldn't go ahead and experiment with that. But you might want to take their concerns into account, especially if it's you know, affecting something they're doing. Um, so you know, communication is important. Please do it. I guess that's a thing. Um, again, teams. Right, yeah, if a majority of FESCO say not to do it, then um, we may have a further conversation. But we also may want to find a place where you can do that thing. So if FESCO says, for example, you should not move the architecture, that's the base architecture for Fedora, up to something that only works on new hardware, um, but um, some people really want to have a build that only works on that hardware, we should try and find out a way so that, um, that both, both of those things can be accommodated. Um, that's a pretty big one right there. Um, so that, that one particular one is hard, but there are a lot of things that are smaller where it's like, okay, well, let's find a place to the side where you can do this and make that available to people. Um, and of course, that's very situationally dependent. Um, again, uh, focus on you know, what you can do in this thing. This is, you know, how could we make this happen? Uh, clearly, you're coming to us with some need or some idea. Um, let, let's Im figure out how to let people's ideas happen rather than saying, uh, your idea doesn't work for us, go somewhere else. Because again, I want Fedora to be this big, inviting, experimental area where people can do all these different things. Um, and again, yeah, if, if you are a team and you're like, wow, I'm being asked to do so many different things, like take a look at this um, not quite filled out mission uh, logic model and see like where, where do these things fit into the current Fedora goals and kind of try and prioritize around those things. I think that will help us overall as a project. Um, one of the tools we have to kind of help with this, we have a site, uh, teams.fedoraproject.org, which is running a hosted version of Taiga. Taiga is an entirely open source uh, project planning Kanban board software. Um, you may find the Kanban uh, features, you know, it's a cards in columns kind of workflow thing. You may find that helpful. Um, it, it's something that maybe doesn't scale as big as uh, if, if you are, you know, a 20-person team working on some sort of project. Um, I know Lee is, is not a gigantic fan of this for his team's project work. Um, but it also is a place where if every team has some amount of presence here, uh, we have kind of a live update of which teams are actually active. Right now, and we try to show the organization of Fedora, we look at all the teams in the wiki, and you know, we've got wiki pages that are 10 years old and out of date. Like there's a Fedora minimization SIG, which never actually did anything, but has like 100 people signed up for it. Adam, who is the objective lead for minimization, didn't even know that it existed. Um, because it, wasn't really, it didn't really exist. And there's no really good way to tell from the wiki if a team is active. So uh, if everybody has, who is an active team makes a presence on Taiga, um, Anybody who, with a FAST account can log in and create a project, and then if you, you have to file a ticket to be moved to a top level or than a personal project. Um, but create something like that and show some of your team's activity. Um, I think that will, that will help us kind of have a directory of what the active teams are in Fedora. This is something that I was kind of hoping the Hubs project would uh, rest in peace. The Hubs project would, would provide us, but since we, we don't really have the resources to develop this, this can kind of give us a a uh, lightweight view of that kind of active teams. And one of the things um, I've talked about as a possible intern project, uh, so Taiga has a, like a, an activity feed kind of thing. Uh, one of the things that would be nice is there's an API for injecting stuff into it. So an intern project might be some tools to take existing things in Fedora, fed messages, pagger issues and things like that and inject them into the feed so that that team's work in other parts of the project becomes visible in this um, team's thing. So this is an idea, it's an experiment. Um, we'll see if it works out. Um, if it doesn't, you know, it's a hosted service, so it will be very easy for us to turn off. But um, that, that, that's one of the places we went to the teams. All right, uh, thus endeth the talking about strategy portion of the talk. It is time for some dinosaurs. Um, 
uh, probably you're familiar with this already. Um, Fedora doesn't do uh, deep invasive tracking or very much tracking at all of systems. So my knowledge of which systems are installed in the wild comes solely from observing our mirror traffic data. And there are a lot of reasons that this, these numbers are not concrete. Network topology influences it, um, all sorts of things. Um, there's some work to do some better statistics gathering on DNF, and the CoreOS team also has a, uh, a kind of uh, opt out, but always, but on by default um, metrics gathering system, which I think will be interesting to see. But that's not hooked up yet, so this is still the same traditional numbers here. This is the um, mirror stats for the last 10 Fedora releases here, so we can see um, Fedora 30 kind of growing up there. Um, it is kind of leveling off there. It'll be interesting to see if this ends up being, you know, a, a growth release. I think partly. Um, RHEL 8 coming out may have stolen some of the excitement from that, and there's a pr pretty decent theory that every time there's a new RHEL release, people who are like to follow the leading edge concentrate on that release for a little bit, but um, we'll, we'll see how the impact of that is. Uh, the, o the overall picture here is still uh, general growth. Um, you'll notice there's a little slope down at the end. Um, Every time I, ha I give a talk at Flock, the slides have a little slope down in the end, so I think that's kind of a seasonal thing. I am I'm quite confident that it's going to continue going up there. Um, I also wanted to show the stats for Fedora Apple. Um, actually, let me see these out of order. This is um, the total for Apple, the red line there, and the blue line is the total for the Fedora OS mirror stats. So I want to emphasize the place where we have the biggest user impact in the world is clearly in Apple. Uh, so um, e even if you feel like, oh, that's something over on the enterprise CentOS -E side of things, um, I encourage you to care about it a little bit because there's a lot of users for whom it's very important. So this is something that I think we've got a lot of, uh, we, we could do more there. Um, and yeah, this slide is just the uh, Apple by, by versions there. Um, you can see just in time for RHEL 8 to come out, Apple 7 is finally beat 6. So again, you know, the enterprise Linux users are somewhat conservative, so that's also, also worth taking into account. Um, all right, that was all the graphs I'm going to show this time because I'm going to run out of time if I, if I um, do a lot more. I could. I could do another 20 minutes of talking about graphs, but I will not. A lightning talk, uh, yeah. Um, all right, uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things I find interesting going on right now, um, and there are a lot of talks about these things uh, at this conference. Uh, rawhide gating is finally enabled. Um, this is something we've been talking about for, and thank you, Denise, uh, you know, for a very long time, five years at least, uh, about making rawhide, the development tree, something that actually just isn't broken all the time, something you can use. Um, yeah, I remember a Linux Weekly News article about this from like 2010. So, you know, um, it's, it's been on our minds for a long time and finally we're doing something about it. Uh, so I find this amazing. Thank you everybody who worked on this. It's very cool. Um, another big effort, this minimization um, objective. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, finding um, a, a way to define a, a smaller a base operating system for Fedora and making it so that we can have you know, smaller containers and smaller bases for all these solutions is just uh, the flexibility that having everything you know, ne neatly organized and uh, not having a lot of baggage that we you know, does not spark joy um, in, in our minimal containers um, is going to bring a lot of flexibility to us. Uh, Fedora CoreOS has launched. It's been a year and a half since Red Hat acquired that company. Um, and so we finally actually have a release out the door of this, our container operating system um, based on Fedora. Uh, I think this is a, a huge achievement and pretty exciting. I think it's neat that how we could integrate that into the Fedora family. Um, they've kind of brought along some of their own tooling and ideas and a, kind of a, a new tool chain for building it that I think we could learn a lot from in the rest of Fedora. There's also ways that we could tie that tool chain into Fedora better. I think right now it's not sending out Fed messages when it would be nice to, um, so that um, we can kind of get some of the statistics on that. Um, so there's uh, 
this is an example of you know, doing some experimentation that we also want to make sure it doesn't just leave floating out as an experiment and we can take the successes from it and integrate it into the way we do other things in the project. Uh, Fedora Silver Blue is kind of based on these same RPM OS tree technologies. It's a workstation that is based on you know, these kind of made, made for the cloud technologies that give us an immutable operating system. This is something the desktop team is working very heavily on. And I'm particularly excited about this because I have seen more blog posts and YouTube videos and excitement, you know, Reddit threads from people not in this room than I have about Fedora for anything for a lot of years. So there's a lot that's scary about this. It makes your, your desktop system work very differently from people are used to with a traditional Linux desktop operating system. But I think the potential here is so huge that this is something we really should be interested in. And there's a talk on Fedora Toolbox, which is a uh, container-based way of working on SilverBlue uh, that I think is uh, kind of very interesting. We'll, we'll make it so that you know, this is an operating system that's sort of focused on living in a container world. And this will give us a you know, desktop offering that we really, like we show people, this is something different from what you're used to. And this is something that will give you tools and an experience that um, is better for you know, living in the modern computing world. Um, so that's very exciting. Uh, Fedora IoT, I mentioned that before. Uh, this is you know, a, a, an addition made for this uh, use case that we hadn't really covered before. We, we've had ARM spin kind of things before. But again, this uses that same RPM OS tree technology to provide a, uh, an experience that actually be used you know, for people out actually running, you know, run this in your home and not have to worry about updating it yourself every six months and, you know, will my will my home automation still work after after updating the next door version? Uh, this uses that container model to deliver that in a way that um, will be consistent. You can actually use it to do things. Um, I am particularly excited about this. Uh, we have some really big, uh, like, corporate users who are interested in this. I'm actually very interested in for the home user use case because uh, this is, uh, when I got into computers, I could make an Apple II do just about anything that Apple II could possibly do. Uh, now, you know, my kids using computers, they, the, you know, the games and just everything they, they look at is nothing that was developed by one person. Like, you can't take a computer and you can't, you know, make Fortnite or whatever just yourself in your spare time. Uh, whereas, so, so, that, so kind of we've lost that hands-on computing thing, and I think IoT is a place where you can take a little device and you can actually make it control your lights, you can make it control, you know, the heating in your house, and you can do these kind of home projects that actually your use of computing is something within your hands, within in your scale, and you can actually do cool things with it. So I think this is an important, uh, basically, gateway to the next generation of Fedora contributors that we need to make sure we are investing in. Um, another big thing, um, I didn't have a cool graphic for this, so I just did a screenshot. Uh, this is the new Ask Fedora site. Uh, it was previously based on AskBot, which is a terrible clone of Stack Exchange. Um, we switched to, uh, for a number of reasons which I can talk about in the hallway, uh, Discourse, which is an entirely open source uh, web forum kind of platform that has uh, we're uh, using a hosted version of. And this was really entirely run by people from the Fedora Join SIG, who kind of took this and set it up with the different languages and all things. And this has been very successful. The traffic is already at the levels where we're you know, maybe needing to consider paying for the next higher hosting plan, which is a great problem to have. Yeah, uh, so this is, uh, and this is, you know, if people come to you with Fedora questions, um, and you don't have time to answer them, like I often do not, um, this is a good place to send people to because um, there are, there's a, a pretty good community of people who are interested in helping out other people in Fedora. And also, if you are bored and want to help out people, um, stop by and find some questions in your, uh, in your area and answer them. On the less optimistic side, um, a uh, year or so ago, uh, Roby Duck, Robert Mayer, who's been our web team lead for a long time, got a different job and ended up with a lot less spare time to work on Fedora. He's been doing Fedora web stuff for, you know, uh, an amazing job for a long time. Um, 
We are basically without a functional web team in Fedora right now, and we've gotten some temporary uh, work from people at Red Hat to do this, but uh, Red Hat is not going to fund a web team for us. So this is a team that kind of needs to be rebuilt because um, you can't be a modern thing without the web at all. So uh, if you're interested in working on web development in Fedora, um, come talk to me because we, we, need, we need a new team built up around this. All right, I'm gonna need to get some water. I'll just let you read that while I drink. All right, so some of the things that are basically uh, challenges to work on, things that we need, we need to do better, uh, particularly in order to really make this whole thing of people can provide solutions, right now to make something that's an output in Fedora, a spin or a container or whatever you want to make, that is a lot of manual work that goes into this thing called the compose. It's all capital letters, the compose. And um, I, I don't know what the time for that compose is right now, but it was up to the time where it was like taking eight, oh, over here. What's that? Okay, yeah, so it's down to four and a half hours, um, which is pretty awesome. It was up to like 18 hours and pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, but ev even with a shorter compose time, which that is almost ability to make two composes in a day, which is uh, going to be huge. Um, one, one of the problems we have is this idea of like blocking the release. So every release we have something like where we, we can either say our artifacts stop Fedora from being released. So if there's an error in the llama herding distribution, um, we will not release Fedora at all that week, which would make a lot of people sad and angry to various degrees. Uh, or we can say, well, sorry, Llama people, no updates for you until the next six months, um, which, of course, makes those people sad. And as I said earlier, we want to make sure that everybody who has these solutions has, you know, is able to do them in Fedora and has, you know, is treated with value. So uh, an alternate approach would be, OK, Llama uh, people, you are on your own, but here's a push button you can push. You put, the, you know, put your parameters in here, hit this button, and out will come your llama spin on you know, the Fedora release cycle or you know, the week after or the week, if you're ready, two weeks before, uh, why wait? So you could make, you know, maybe for some reason the llama um, farming cycle you know, is, is a seasonal thing, so you maybe want to have a new llama farming release every every three months, you should be able to do that, or maybe once a year, because you only need to update things that in, infrequently. Um, so we, we need to be able to decouple those things. And I think that uh, in order to do this, we, we sh uh, to do this right, we should do this for everything. Everything, we all of the outputs in Fedora, you know, from the, the big things like Fedora Workstation, you know, down to the, the little things, Nero Fedora and other things, uh, they should all be uh, self-service like this in the same sort of way, even if it turns out that you know, for the big things, the, the release engineering team, one of the things they provide is, yeah, we, we shepherd that through. Not a llama joke, just uh, yeah. um, We need a lot more automation in order to do this. Um, a lot of the work we do in Fedora is manual labor that is not really great use of human intelligence. Um, a lot of the packaging we do, where we take something that is an upstream package and then we reformat into our packaging format, um, we're not really adding any value to that at all. Like, it, um, there's no reason you'd go for Fedora because you know our our version of this Perl subdependency is the better one than the Debian one. Um, at least I hope that's not true. That would be um, <laughs> that'd be awful. Um, but. Uh, we, we've got to find ways that, that the human effort we have, I and mean, we only have so many people, we want to make sure that the human effort we have is used to the best uh, amount while we still are able to cope with the exploding amount of open source software out in the world. And this just doesn't scale to humans. So we need to find a better way to do that. 
Uh, we also kind of, as part of automation, we need to move where we do our quality checks. And I think we've been doing, doing some of this, but mostly right now, we check for quality basically at, at the borders. Um, when a new package comes into Fedora, we do a rigorous package review. And then after you pass the review, the dirty secret is you can do whatever you want to that spec file and you know people have, and nothing really stops you. Uh, so we, we need to do some kind of things that, that make that better. And then, then the other place is with QA. Like we do uh, extensive QA Using, reading other users' passwords requires permission. Thank you. All right. um, <laughs> um, we, we do extensive QA at the Fedora releases, but we don't do QA on like update batches and things like that. Again, it's a, bor a border check as, we, as, as, the, as it leaves the project out to users, we do a check, but we don't do much continuous QA. So um, again, the CI, CI, CD efforts will really help with that. Finally, we've got to do something be better about packaging dependencies. Uh, in general, people who are interested in, in I, I know some of you are, are exceptions to this in this room, but in general, people who want to make something available in Fedora want to make an application available, something for end users. And it usually is the case that that package, especially these days, has you know 300 dependencies. And e getting each of those 300 dependencies through individual package review is not a good use of time. Um, and what's worse, if you do what we call the right thing and debundle and get each one of those things through package review, you now end up being the owner of one application you care about and 300 dependencies that you don't give any cares about. Um, and, uh, but you've told everybody, I'm the maintainer of this. And that, you know, that lie is not really very helpful because someone else comes along and sees, oh, this is in Fedora, it must be maintained, and builds dependencies on it, and uh, it, it's, not a, it's not a good situation. So we need, I, you know, I don't know the answer to that. But in a lot of ways, this is a big data problem these days. You know, again, you know, when there's thousands of, of dependencies, like there are other ways we can attach, attack this rather than having a human go through and package up those and claim ownership of it even when they don't really own it. So um, I don't know the answer to that, but um, we, that's something we really should work on. Uh, switching, this is actually organized after the, after the first part of the talk. It, it, all, it all comes together in a nice way if you see the whole thing together. Uh, but from, from the teams and building blocks you know, thing I talked about, there are a couple things that kind of fall out of this about how we present and market and organize Fedora. Uh, one of them is something I've been saying for a while, but which is hard to hard, have it to break. Uh, this is just like, you know, Red Hat doesn't want you to call Red Hat Enterprise Linux Red Hat. Microsoft, uh, when I was in college, um, some of my friends would call Microsoft Word Microsoft. Dri drive me crazy. Or, um, you know, the, the thing that comes with Lego, um, the, the little thing that says, please do not call our blocks Legos, call them Lego building blocks. Right, this is, this is the same thing. Uh, we want Fedora to be, th this is Fedora in this room. We're Fedora, uh, we're the project. Uh, Fedora operating systems and outputs are Fedora workstation, Fedora, you know, the Fedora package collection, those kind of things. That, that's a, uh, I know that's a hard discipline, but if we all start doing it, maybe it will slowly trickle out into the world. Um, and then the other part of that is, like, um, if we want these different artifacts um, to connect with their audiences, it's okay if we make it be Lamatron OS by Fedora rather than saying Fedora's Lamatron OS. Um, you know, if people want to do it the other way around, that's fine. But I think if we go um, back with yeah these here, you can see both of these have Fedora, and then Core OS is a, is a strong brand. Silver Blue as it's a little bit less bold there, but kind of the strong brand is, is the thing. And this is, with, with these two things, is kind of happening naturally. We started out with Fedora Cloud, Fedora Workstation, Fedora Server, these kind of generic descriptors, and we're moving to kind of a branded thing. And I actually asked the IoT edition people to come up with a shiny name for the IoT edition as well, because I think that kind of fits this scheme. Um, now I've lost where I was. Um, yeah. So uh, I think that that's, that's kind of a shift from how we've marketed things. Um, 
I know there's a little bit of worry, like is this all going to fall apart into a kind of chaotic thing where nothing's tied together and everything's in its own little fiefdom? Yeah. Um, maybe. Um, I think the, the communication and just the idea that you know, we do want to all work together and even if Fedora is not the, like, the front of the name, it all still is Fedora and we're all working together, I think that will help. And I think that branding that way is better than the alternative, which is that Fedora slowly becomes irrelevant to everybody who's not already in this, in this room, in the Fedora world already, where Fedora is a primary value. Uh, so I think it allows us to reach out. So that's, um, that's kind of a change to how we've done things, and it'd um, be interesting to see how that goes, but that, that's um, my preference for it. Um, and then finally, just kind of some more, I uh, talked about you know, what, what the vision is, and I don't have a vision statement for Fedora yet, but again, run for council, help me work on it. Um, some things that I know though, the next time there's a Docker, or the next time someone wants to build CoreOS, we want them to be, oh yeah, well Fedora is the obvious place to work on that. We don't want them to say, you know, go off and build their own distro from scratch. Like, um, we, we, we want to be the place to do those things. Um, we should find a way, all that open source, all those thousands of packages, Java and Python and Ruby and Node and those things, we should find a place to integrate all of those into something that all works together, um, even if it doesn't mean repackaging it all in RPMs. Or if it does mean repackaging it all in RPMs, make that such a minor detail that nobody even needs to know that that's happening unless they really care. Um, We've got to catch the next generation of developers and sysadmins where they are. Uh, where they are right now is GitHub. So uh, we need to figure that out because we have a very strong open source ethos. You know, so all the, the hosted things that I talked about, like those are open source uh, products. They're not even open core. Those are like pure open source play companies, which is awesome and I love to support those. But if all of the energy in the world around open source is really kind of in these areas. Um, may, maybe GitLab is a possibility, but um, that doesn't really have the network effect everybody's individual GitLab. GitHub has such, such a strong network effect that we need to be able to address that. I don't, again, I don't know the answer to that and I don't know how to figure out how to you know, keep true to our freedom foundation and something that really you know, is important to us about making this world where everybody has an you know, open source free software Experience. I don't know how to do that, but we need to find an answer to that because um, we're in trouble if we don't. And finally, this thing where every operating system, it moves both too fast and too slow at the same time, um, it's still a problem. You know, the, the technologies we're working on with modularity, the container stuff, flat packs, um, snaps for our friends working on snaps, uh, these, these things are, are attempting to work on that, but we don't have it solved yet, and I would really like, you know, the, um, the register headlines to be, you know, wow, Fedora has solved this big problem. Um, that, uh, what I would like to see. So, um, how we get there? It's up to you guys. So, uh, and, uh, let, let's, let's figure out how to do it together. Um, there are a lot of talks here about you know, automation and uh, modularity and things, things towards these problems, so I think this will be an exciting, good conference. Um, and yeah, um, thank you everybody. Thank you.